46 to 48 weeks a year, basically one night stands. In other words, we would be nothing to cover four states in two days, back and forth across the country, maybe three times in two months. We play two or three times a year for a week or two in New York and Chicago. These are the places we look forward to because that's where we have our laundry done. The rest of the time we do it the hard way. You know. Places like the Paramount and the Strand Theater in New York, you would go in for a period of eight to ten weeks sometimes without a day off, seven days a week, and, and go in at uh, approximately nine in the morning to, and do your first show about 9.30 and not get out of the theater again until well after midnight, other than for those short breaks while the movie was on, which they used to cut parts of the movie if they had a big line waiting around the corner of customers. So it was really di very hard and very difficult. We used to do 30 weeks or a year sometimes of theaters and just open and close in one town one night, get on a train and supposedly sleep and arrive the next morning and start all over again in another town. Four and five and six shows a day, every day. <laughs> Union, which was governed pretty strongly and almost single-handedly by a man by the name of Petrillo, who did many good things, I guess, for the Musicians Union, but also ran it with an iron fist. And when he decided something was wrong, he had the power to control it. Consequently, he put a ban on recording even before the war ended. And Harry Truman was president, and Truman asked him to lift the ban because he felt that music was important, and having records available for the service people and so on, and Petrillo refused. I told a congressional committee last January in Washington that the musicians have no quarrel with uh, recordings made for home consumption, but we do have a quarrel with for recordings that are made for jukeboxes and radio stations. Certainly no one can expect the musician to continue playing at his own funeral. With the year's end, at Petrillo's order, the record business ground to a stop. So there was a long period where the new records were not available. But the vocalists could record. They were not controlled by the musicians' union. And Sinatra had big hits without any musicians. Just a big vocal group moaning and groaning while he did the lyric, you know. <laughs> and... Uh, and they were big, uh, so the, the, I think this gave the uh, uh, the singers a big edge as far as being the important factor because what records you went out to buy, and people were buying records, were the records of singers. And, you, and the, the Tommy Dorseys and the Jimmy Dorseys and the Benny Goodmans and all of us were not available. Toward the end of 1948, the record companies and the union came to terms. <laughs> 